Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. Today I want to talk about goal semantic similarity using the Wang 2007 method, what it is, how we work, some mathematics behind it, and in the end, how do you actually run such analysis in R and how do you interpret the result. But before that, let's roll the intro. So what is semantic similarity? So the main objective of semantic similarity is to measure the distance between the semantic meanings of a pair of words, phrases, sentence, or document. So if we have five and six, it's very easy to understand the difference between them and similarity between them, right? But if you have words such as car, buses, cat, bottles, guitars, and all that thing, semantic similarity is trying to cross-relate two phrases through some other method to understand whether they're similar or they're not in some other way. Okay, so what we are trying to do is to understand goal semantic similarity. But before we go into that and the mathematics, let's talk a little bit about goal. What is gene ontology? So the gene ontology consortium actually tried to develop controls to structural vocabulary, something we want we know as ontology, so that we can properly communicate what is the function of the gene with terminology that we can understand. Right. The second thing they're trying to do is to apply goal terms in the annotation of sequence, gene, or gene product, and all the other stuff, so that every gene that we have has some sort of goal terms related to them. So the last one is, of course, provide a centralized public resources where everyone can refer to, and when we talk about an ID, we both understand what we are talking about. So how does it work? It's actually through something called a directed acyclic graph called DAG. So Go is actually structured in three big chains, the molecular function, the cellular function, and the biological function. So you can see on the right, there's a metabolic process on the top chain, and there are, there are sub-chain under this main chain, for example, small molecule, primary organic biosynthetic process. They are all part of the metabolic process, but you know they're related to or part of the process, and every single process will have some of the process underneath it as a subset until you grow, until you cannot work. So in certain sense, you can actually jump a different level. So the level here are not uh, fixed. You can have three level, four level, five level, six level. Depends on the location, on the terminology, and the ontology on this DAG. Okay, so a little bit more information about the three different function and the three different subgroup in the Go ontology, specifically the molecular function, sometimes called the MF, the cellular component, sometimes called a CC, and biological function, sometimes called a BP. So I'm going to leave the slide in the video description down below so that if you want to have more time to read through them, you can. And I'll also add all the relevant information inside the slide under the speaker notes, as you can see right here. Okay, so how to interpret this is basically go terms that are closer together, they are more similar. If they are under the same subchain, there's more connection between them and the chain above means they're more similar. Uh, the further away they are, of course, the further the way they are. And one thing that we need to know is that they are disjoint, meaning that the molecular function will never be linked with the uh, cellular component and the biological function and processes of it. So there are three distinct parts of Go ontology. And just to make sure that you understand why we need to run all three when we do such uh, semantic similarity um, analysis. Okay, so there are also relationship in between each term, for example, part of and is a. Okay, so uh, this is not true, so just to give an example, there can be something like hexose metabolic process, it's part of the monosaccharide, but is a small molecule biosynthetic process, something like that, where part of signify a weaker relationship between the two chain, and is a signify a stronger relationship between the two chain or the two term. Okay, so how do we measure is through this very simple and easy to understand mathematical uh, symbols of summation and all the other stuff, which I'm not gonna go through. <laughs> but before we actually uh, try to understand the algorithm, I think it's very important we understand some terminology used in the graph theory, specifically the node and ages. So graph theory actually is a very good a very useful field of mathematics where we study the relationship between uh, one another. So in this case, figure 5.1 is an example of graph with nine nodes and eight edges. What that means is nodes are the dots and the edges are the connection in between. 
Okay, so there can be any number of nodes with any number of edges that can be joined, disjoint, or linked in some other uh, unique way, which is actually a whole field in, in graph theory, which I'm going to put the link down here for anyone that's more interested in, in the whole process of graph theory. This is actually provided by the MIT Open Course Web. So it's a great resource to understand. So this is the DAG that I actually pulled from the original 1207 paper. So uh, just remember that Go ontology structure are not always the same. They actually changes from time to time, depends on the finding. But I want to remain this graph, so anyone needs to have more information, you can actually read from the original paper. So I remain the graph exactly as it is. So how does the author actually put into place is uh, the solid line is actually is a, or a dotted line is a part of. So in this case, intracellular organelle is part of an intracellular, but is the organelle, while intracellular is part of the cell, and the cell is a cellular component, and so on. So remember that part of actually signify a weaker relationship, and is a signify a stronger relationship. So we're going to artificially set that to 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, just to help with our understanding, but this value is not always consistent, it's not always the same in all the calculations. So now actually just start with, a, with an example. For example, we are trying to calculate all the relationship with the intracellular organelle, specifically GO0043229, and we're trying to understand the relationship with another cell, an, another uh, GO terminology, GO ontology. So what we do is that we take the ages between the two nodes, and if there are two uh, if there's one jump away, the relation should be directly the width of the arrow, in this case 0 0.6 here and 0 0.8 up there. But if there's two jump away, that would be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8. So in this case, this will, the relationship between intracellular organelle and cellular component will be 0 0.64. So same theories apply where intracellular organelle with intracellular is a 0 0.6 and intracellular organelle to cell is 0 0.36, while uh, intracellular organelle in this root that we calculate is 0 0.288. So when you have two calculation, we only take the maximum because the, we only take the shortest route uh, to reach there. So if we end up with intracellular organelle and cellular component to be at 0 0.288 and 0 0.64, we will just not calculate the 0 0.22 and pretend that it doesn't exist when we only take the maximum among them. Okay, so every single of this can be calculated very easily. And when you run a semantic similarity between the two goal term, uh, this is the number that you are able to get. Okay. So, however, the problem is that genes almost always have more than one goal term annotated to them. So we're going to use two examples here, ADH4 and LDB3, which is, again, the original gene I pull out directly from the 1207 paper. So ADH4 is actually being annotated with seven different goal term. For example, alcohol dehydrogenase, zinc ion binding, and metal, non, metal ion dependent alcohol dehydrogenase. While LDB3 has five different goal term, which is like electron carrier, protein binding, zinc ion binding, and heme binding. So in this case, only two of them are similar, are the same. So in this case, the metal ion binding and the zinc ion binding. So we know that they are both ion binding protein, but the way that they do things are slightly different. So in, in the old ways, how we actually do is we calculate the total number of gold terms. In this case, there are 12 of them. We take whatever they are the same and we run two divided by 12. That's like a 0.12%, sorry, 0.12, yeah. So about 12% similarity between the two genes. But obviously, um, it is not really that clear cut most of the time. And an electron carrier activity might be somewhat related to alcohol dehydrogenase activity in some other sense. So the original O way is not as good, which is why go semantic similarity come up with the process of calculating the individual sem semantic similarity of each go term. So which is what you see on this matrix right here. So on the top, you can see there's five different gold term annotated from the LDB3 gene. And on the vertical, you can see seven different gold term annotated from the ADH4 gene. So every single relationship between the two gold term are calculated. So you can see if the gold term are exactly the same, 
it is a one because there's no jump between one code term to another. So it's a one and the further away it is, uh, you can actually see that the jump become lower and lower and lower until we reach something like 0 0.11, 0 0.071. I believe that the furthest away in the same uh, goal apology. So what we do later is we try to find a maximum between uh, every single row and every single column. So 0 0.246 is 4023 is the most similar to uh, 9055, similar with 4024 and 9055. And we have this is exactly the same. We have 0 0.815 between these two terminology and so on and so forth. So we find out every single possible highest combination among them. And then what we do is we just add them up and average them. So in this case, just by adding up all the maximum and all the maximum plus together, divide by 12, because as you can see, there's 12 of them, seven plus five, and the average, the, the actual similarity score we calculate now is 0 0.26. So that's in comparison to the old method that we do, with only the matching term, which is 0 0.17, 70%, but the 1207 method has a 0.69%. And we do understand that these two genes are, are somewhat similar to each other. And 17% feels a little bit too low uh, to actually properly represent the similarity in terms of the function. So that's the basic concept of why we end up with this number. So how do you actually run it in R? is the script right here. So just to make sure it's clear, everything in everything with a larger sign is the code that you need to run. And the output, actually, I just put a screenshot right here. So uh, first thing first, install R, R Studio and packages and all that thing. Uh, go to Bioconductor and install Go Sam Sim, which is Go Semantic Similarity, and run this one, Go Data, which actually just get the Go database into your environment. And then once you've done that, you can easily compare the two different go term, go term with the kind of data databases that you downloaded with the method that you have specified in this case is one. So you can know that 4022 and 5515 has a 0 0.116 similarity between them. And if you have a gene, for example, ADHN LDB3 that we said just now, you can actually make a list of go one and go to and then make the comparison between the two and you can actually get the whole list of the uh, similarity matrix between the two goal term and of course if you do want to have a little bit more um, control in terms of the gene you can also run this which is cdc 14 mc m10 uh, cdc 20 nmu mmp1 and you just specify a slightly different database over here and then you can just do a mesh on one and you can do M gene sim. And again, it will give you a semantic similarity between each of a gene as a completely different matrix. Okay, so the last one will actually be just a slightly different uh, naming system where 835-52261 are all actually just uh, different numbers and they represent different Gene ID. Gene, I believe so. And then what you do is that you combine these two gene ID. together and then you combine them and then the two different cluster, it will actually try to generate a similarity score for you, which is in this case, GS1 and GS2 is 0 0.621. So you don't have to calculate the matrix yourself. It will actually do the, the summary and averages for you. Uh, directly as 0 0.621. So that's basically the whole concept of the one method in the calculations of semantic similarity in Go. But there are some important notes that I want to make sure. Uh, this is more like an educational and an exemplary video. The relationship weights are not fixed. 0 0.6, 0 0.8 weight as highlight in the author are a way of showing you how to do it. They might change from analysis to analysis and from time to time. And the goal relationship, again, are not static. The, the DAG graph that you see can change all the time. And there are actually more than one authorities that maintain the relationship. So make sure you understand who you are downloading from and you're citing them properly. So the result is slightly a little bit more reproducible and someone can understand what you're trying to do. And just to actually solve that problem, we always try to run more than one task similarity score. In this case, you will also run a similarity score between Kate, uh, DOS, MESH, and so on, just to get a more solid uh, 
replication of what you're doing and you can tell a stronger story. So that's basically the whole concept of ghost semantic similarity explained in a way with no mathematics and symbols involved. I hope you enjoy the video and maybe subscribe for the next one before it comes up. That's all. Bye. Thank you.